Good morning, Four Oaks Church. It's Pastor Paul. It's Wednesday, May the 10th. I'm clearly not in the home office, the studio there at Four Oaks Church. Had some technical difficulties these last 24 hours. So I am broadcasting from here at home. But nonetheless, we are here committed to doing this pastoral devotional today. We have been walking through the Sermon on the Mount. And what Jesus is really doing is casting a vision for the good life. That if we want to be happy, if we want to be blessed, if we want to flourish, then this is how we are to align our lives, our priorities, our values um, with his. And that is the path to happiness. Now, it seems upside down. It seems backwards to be poor in spirit. To, to give, to turn the other cheek, to not retaliate. It seems backwards that that would be the path to happiness, but we know experientially that's true. Um, and we also know that we take these words of wisdom by faith that Jesus is offering to us. So Jesus has been walking us through the Sermon on the Mount in, in teaching, giving teaching from the Old Testament uh, reinterpreting those, um, correcting those misapplications of the law that the Pharisees had been engaging in. And now he's sort of proactively giving us a path to spiritual wholeness. And as we've seen in Matthew 6, he, Jesus is talking about three specific spiritual disciplines. There is the discipline of giving or generosity, the discipline of prayer, and the discipline of fasting. And in each of these, Jesus tells us um, to not do these things in order to be seen as righteous. So, so look back at verse 6, 1, um, verse 1 in chapter 6. And this is sort of the theme over this section where Jesus says, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. And as we've seen, that's Jesus' concern here. And every time he talks about these disciplines, he talks about doing these things in secret. And again, the idea is not that we shouldn't pray publicly or that we shouldn't give publicly or that we shouldn't um, fast publicly. What Jesus means by this is that it is God who knows the secret places of the heart and that ultimately we don't do these things in order to be seen by men, held up by men, and affirmed and in praise by men, we do them in order to glorify God, in order for the fact that he would be pleased with us. So yesterday we talked about this idea of giving and generosity. Today we want to talk about prayer. So I'm going to direct your attention. We're going to be looking at verses 6 through, I'm sorry, 5 through 8 in Matthew 6. So here we go. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. So again, context. When we think about the examples that we have in the scriptures of Pharisees praying, it does not show them in a positive light. So flip over, if you would just for a moment, into Luke chapter 18. And it's going to be here that we have a story, that we have an example of the way that the Pharisees would approach praying. Um, the way that the Pharisees would approach um, this idea of coming before God. Okay, now this is a parable, so this is... This is not a um, this is not a, a, a narrative part of, of the gospel. It's, it's Jesus telling a story, using an example with the Pharisee in it. Okay, so look at um, Luke eighteen verse nine. 
He told this parable to some who were trusting, who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. He says, two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humble, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Now, there's a ton of lessons from that particular parable, but what I want you to note is that it was the regular practice of all Israelites to pray. So, when Jesus says here in Matthew 6, when you pray, it is just assumed that we're praying, right? It is assumed that we have a discipline of prayer. It is assumed that we are coming before God. And that's an important thing to remember because a lot of times we act as if prayer is optional to the Christian life. I can't remember if it was Andrew Murray or one of the other great authors from 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 many years ago who wrote, we are no more or no less um, than who we are in prayer before God. And it's there, again, it's this idea that prayer is assumed because prayer is communion with God. But what Jesus, but, but again, what, what we also see by this example from Luke 18 is that apparently it was the practice of many of the Pharisees to not only pray publicly, but to make a spectacle of praying, um, to come before God, to, to, to again, make a show of things to be seen and rewarded and affirmed by men. It also seems that these prayers, not only would they be very public and ostentatious, but they, um, could go on and on. So, so look at verse 7 and back in Matthew 6. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them. So we don't know if this was, we know it was a common practice of Gentiles to go before their God or deity and to babble on and on and on. And that, that again, uh, we don't know if the Pharisees emulated this, but but, it, but again, going back to Luke 18 for a second, what I want you to note is how short, how succinct the prayer of the unrighteous man was, the tax collector, and compare it to his phrase, um, or the way he prayed to that of the Pharisee. Go back to Luke 18. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes to all that I get. You get the sense there, don't you, that the Pharisee is babbling, uh, that he's babbling on and on, that he's more, he's not having a conversation or communion with God. What he's doing is having a conversation with himself about himself so that other people could hear. But when you compare this to the prayer of the tax collector, who is the one who's unrighteous, it's just very simple. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And it says that this prayer pleased God. Now, I think it's important to confess our sins specifically. I think it's important to pray for specific things. That's not the point of what I'm about to say. What I will, would, would point out, is that God already knows the depths of our hearts. Sometimes we may feel like we have to repeat things over and over again just to make sure that God hears us, right? And God always hears us, even the very short, contrite, humble prayer of this man. That should also encourage us that a lot of times we can measure our spirituality by how long we pray or um, what sort of verbiage we used in our prayers or how focused we were in our prayers or all these order sort of external measurement tools. But again, what God sees is the heart, even the heart of the short, brief, succinct prayer. 
as long as it's heartfelt. I don't know about you, but I find that incredibly encouraging. And all of this brings us back to the point that the way of flourishing, um, the way to happiness is by aligning ourselves with the kingdom. And the most fundamental disposition that God is concerned with, whether it's our giving or our fasting um, or our praying, is our hearts. Do we have a heart that's set apart to God that wants to honor him and glorify him? So be encouraged by that, for folks, that, that wherever you are today, even those short sentence, heartfelt prayers are the true measure of one's spirituality. Because again, we are no more or no less than who we are before God in prayer. All right, that's going to be our segment for this morning. Tomorrow, Lord willing, we'll be back in the sound booth uh, recording with all the lights, camera, and action. So thanks for bearing with this subpar recording this morning. Uh, but I'll be praying for you nonetheless. Lord Jesus, we pray that our prayers would be faithful that they would be those that are honoring to you that would flow out of a humble and contrite heart. Lord, we ask these things in your son's name today. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Thanks, everybody.